In Unix computing, the system load is a measure of the amount of computational work that a computer system performs. The load average represents the average system load over a period of time. It conventionally appears in the form of three numbers which represent the system load during the last 1, 5, and 15 minute periods. <laughs> Unix style load calculation All Unix and Unix like systems generate a dimensionless metric of three load average numbers in the kernel. Users can easily query the current result from a Unix shell by running the uptime command. The W and TOP commands show the same three load average numbers, as do a range of graphical user interface utilities. In GNU, Linux, they can also be accessed by reading the proc loadav file. An idle computer has a load number of zero, the idle process isn't counted. Each process using or waiting for CPU the ready queue or run queue increments the load number by 1. Each process that terminates decrements it by 1. Most Unix systems count only processes in the running on CPU or runnable waiting for CPU states. However, Linux also includes processes in uninterruptible sleep states usually waiting for disk activity, which can lead to markedly different results if many processes remain blocked in I.O. due to a busy or stalled I.O. system. This, for example, includes processes blocking due to an NFS server failure or too slow media e.g., USB 1, X storage devices. Such circumstances can result in an elevated load average which does not reflect an actual increase in CPU use but still gives an idea of how long users have to wait. Systems calculate the load average as the exponentially damped, weighted moving average of the load number. The three values of load average refer to the past 1, 5, and 15 minutes of system operation. Mathematically speaking, all three values always average all the system load since the system started up. They all decay exponentially, but they decay at different speeds, they decay exponentially by E after 1, 5, and 15 minutes respectively. Hence, the one-minute load average consists of 63% more precisely, 1 to 1, E of the load from the last minute and 37% 1, E of the average load since start-up, excluding the last minute. For the 5 and 15 minute load averages, the same 63%, 37% ratio is computed over 5 minutes and 15 minutes respectively. Therefore, it is not technically accurate that the one-minute load average only includes the last 60 seconds of activity, as it includes 37% of the activity from the past, but it is correct to state that it includes mostly the last minute. For single CPU systems that are CPU bound, one can think of load average as a measure of system utilization during the respective time period. For systems with multiple CPUs, one must divide the load by the number of processors in order to get a comparable measure. For example, one can interpret a load average of 1.730.607.98 on a single CPU system as during the last minute, the system was overloaded by 73% on average 1.73 runnable processes, so that 0.73 processes had to wait for a turn for a single CPU system on average. During the last 5 minutes, the CPU was idling 40% of the time on average. During the last 15 minutes, the system was overloaded 698% on average 7.98 runnable processes, so that 6.98 processes had to wait for a turn for a single CPU system on average. This means that this system CPU, disk, memory, etc. could have handled all of the work scheduled for the last minute if it were 1.73 times as fast. In a system with four CPUs, a load average of 3.73 would indicate that there were, on average, 3.73 processes ready to run, and each one could be scheduled into a CPU. 
On modern Unix systems, the treatment of threading with respect to load averages varies. Some systems treat threads as processes for the purposes of load average calculation, each thread waiting to run will add one to the load. However, other systems, especially systems implementing so-called M, N threading, use different strategies such as counting the process exactly once for the purpose of load regardless of the number of threads, or counting only threads currently exposed by the user thread scheduler to the kernel, which may depend on the level of concurrency set on the process. Linux appears to count each thread separately as adding one to the load. Topic. CPU load versus CPU utilization The comparative study of different load indices carried out by Ferrari et al. reported that CPU load information based upon the CPU queue length does much better in load balancing compared to CPU utilization. The reason CPU queue length did better is probably because when a host is heavily loaded, its CPU utilization is likely to be close to 100% and it is unable to reflect the exact load level of the utilization. In contrast, CPU queue lengths can directly reflect the amount of load on a CPU. As an example, two systems, one with three and the other with six processes in the queue, are both very likely to have utilizations close to 100% although they obviously differ. <laughs> Reckoning CPU load On Linux systems, the load average is not calculated on each clock tick, but driven by a variable value that is based on the HZ frequency setting and tested on each clock tick. HZ variable is the pulse rate of particular Linux kernel activity, 1 Hz is equal to 1 clock tick, 10 milliseconds by default. Although the HZ value can be configured in some versions of the kernel, it is normally set to 100. The calculation code uses the HZ value to determine the CPU load calculation frequency. Specifically, the timer, C, calc underscore load function will run the algorithm every 5 asterisk HZ, or roughly 5 times per second. Following is that function in its entirety. The countdown is over a load underscore freak of 5 Hz. The Avonrun array contains 1 minute, 5 minute and 15 minute average. The calc underscore load macro and its associated values are defined in shed. H. Other system performance commands Other commands for assessing system performance include Uptime the system reliability and load average Top for an overall system view VMstat VMstat reports information about runnable or blocked processes, memory, paging, block I.O., traps, and CPU HTOP Interactive Process Viewer DSTAT helps correlate all existing resource data for processes, memory, paging, block I.O., traps, and CPU activity. If top interactive network traffic viewer per interface, NetHog's interactive network traffic viewer per process, IOTOP interactive I.O. viewer, IOTOP homepage, IOSTAT for storage I.O. statistics. NetStat for network statistics MPStat for CPU statistics TLoad load average graph for terminal XLoad load average graph for X PROC – LoadAV text file containing load average See also CPU usage Topic. External links Brendan Gregg the 8th of August 2017. Linux Load Averages, Solving the Mystery. 
Retrieved the 22nd of January 2018. Neil J. Gunther. Unix Load Average, Part 1, How It Works. PDF. TeamQuest. Retrieved 12 August 2009. Andre Lewis. The 31st of July 2009. Understanding Linux CPU Load, When Should You Be Worried? Retrieved 21 July 2011. Explanation using an illustrated traffic analogy. Ray Walker, the 1st of December 2006. Examining load average. Linux Journal. Retrieved the 21st of July 2011. Karsten Becker. Linux OS load monitoring toolset. Lodav. Equals equals notes. <laughs>